of getting gravel on Apple Watch, but um, I want to make sure that it sinks. It sinks yeah. I don't know. I I, I converted him to an apple. He converted me. I was I'm not into technology so much. When you're married to someone who is a technology. Like so I was like, Ugh, what do I need this? Why are you out? Uh, what's, what's the deal? But it <laughs> I just I, I'm not a I'm not techie like that. I I, I still keep my regular watch. I, I like a normal watch. But it's it is pretty cool. I enjoy it mostly because it's um exercise it keeps track of your steps um timers when i'm time your explanation too do you have the health app i don't i don't use i don't use it it comes up all to my phone it's it's to this piece it's very very cool if you learn how to use it they like it more but i like it for for no um, my husband just had the had atrial fibrillation and the watch picked it up that's amazing. And his doctor Ooh. was able to this get guy here with You also have one? Do you like it, Bella? I love it. I love it. What do you use it most for? When I walk, it, it tells me when to walk, when to do exercise. Yeah, it tells you stand up. It's been a while. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I use it as a phone. It's very convenient. I don't but if your phone rings, you just pick yeah. it up. That exactly. is very cool. Oh I like God. that you're you not, for me, I like that I'm not attached to my phone. Exactly. Right. So like if I'm serving the kids dinner and Mushka's calling me from New York, I'm like, Mushka, I can't talk now, but how are you? Everybody say hi to Mushka, you know? It's very, wow. or, it's like a phone? It, yeah. It's, yeah, it's not ideal like a phone. It's not a phone, but you can use it as a phone. You use it all the time as a phone? Yeah, I use it all the time. Wow, yeah, one of the most of the time, most of the time. Yours no, yours is Apple, right? No, mine is uh, Samsung. Oh, hers is Samsung. Oh, I, I have Samsung uh, phone, so I have, I have no choice. All right, <laughs> Louisa will give you a call. She needs no, it. <laughs> I'm thinking of getting one for Rob. So okay. like the it's very convenient. Like Besides, my kids put their emergency numbers, so if something happens to me, it it calls automatically to these numbers. Yeah, a lot of people love it. Again, it, it'll it'll grow on me. In the meantime, I still have my nice watch. Oh, really? I just, I, I feel like a normal person. Yeah, I feel like You know, this yeah. depends on what I'm in the mood of. My kids laugh at me, but I I, I feel like, I don't know, I just like a normal watch. <laughs> but you also, you also get your messages, not only phone calls. I get my messages, all yeah. Messages Which are... is good, yeah. I get my watch. My, my phone, it's thinking all day. I don't even look. But I, I like it for exercise. That's my primary and for the phone element. Now that we had a class on technology, um, <laughs> let's begin. We'll start off. Yeah, this is the world we live in. We are... Um, not my world. We've got Sandy. We've got um, Bella and Karen and Gittel. Hi, Rochelle. Yay, she came on. We have Rita. We have Luda, Renee. Renee, are you calling from Vienna? Yeah, Renee, have... do you hear us? Hi, everyone. From Welcome. Vienna. Hi, Renee. Hello. Hi, Rivka. Hi, everyone. So good to see you. And we've got Rochelle. Finally, you made it, Rochelle. Welcome. Thank you. I'm driving. OK, be careful. We'll speak loud. And then live today, we've got Rachela, we've got Greta, Louisa, Hilda, we got Leona. I know a couple more are joining us slowly but surely. So we are going to get started, but I have to begin by answering Sandy's question on um, what is I'm going to explain. Uh, last week, where um, you asked me specifically about the number seven, right? Yes. We were talking last week about the wells that Yitzhak dug. And, send, and and we focused, for those that were here last week, on there was the element that it was a treaty between him and Avimelech, and that it was the number seven, the seventh well. So the reason it was named Be'er Sheva was not because of the treaty, because we spoke about that these treaties and uh, diplomats, those are things that don't last. But he focused on the number seven. So Sandy wanted to know what was special about the number seven, that that became the focus. Am I right that that was the question? That that took, that that became the permanent Beersheba. Right. In other words, so what I that want the to other didn't was, last. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So the answer to that is that it wasn't the focus, wasn't the fact that it was the number seven. Wait, are you guys frozen? No. No. No? Oh, you hear me. Okay, good. It wasn't the focus, wasn't that it was the number seven. It was the focus yes, yeah. that it was, it was the focus on the element that he dug of, of the digging of the wells. The seven wasn't, it was just the se second reason. That wasn't, you understand? He chose the, the second name was enduring, not because it was number seven, but because that was the second name. The focus wasn't so much on the number seven. We had spoken about special things about number seven. But the focus wasn't the fact that it was number seven. It was the focus of the fact that it wasn't the first name of the treaty like Avram. Because it was repeated. In other words, repetition made it. You're frozen. Now you're frozen. Now you're back. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know. I'm going to shoot Rabbi Ted. Well, I'm going to say it's the internet. Yeah, no, but he's he like, is something. that like a telephone? I don't um, whatever. Um, anyways, do you guys, do you ladies hear me? Better before. Yeah, better before. Uh, it was better before. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sandy, you and I could talk later a little bit more. No, not not important. Thank yes, you, though. It was a Thank very good for... question. It was a very good question. In other words, repeating makes it more relevant. Okay. That's in, what a I'm sense, getting. in a sense. All right. Mm -hmm. We are this week on Parshas Vayetze. We're doing pretty good. We're making pretty good progress. Uh, we are in the first book of Beratius. Um and if we go to the table of content, which is the beginning of our Parsha, for those of you that have a Chumash, we are on Parsha number seven, and we are on Parsha's Vayetze. So let's do our thing. Let's do our song. Beratius Noach, Lech Lecha, Vayerach Ha'esara told us. Beratius Noach, Lech Lecha, Vayerach Ha'esara told us. Let's go, everybody, sing with me. Vayetze, vayishlach, vayeshev, miket vayigash vayechi. That's okay. We are on. We are on portion number seven on vayetze, and the word vayetze means. Does anyone know? We're on page one eighty one. Does anybody know what the word vayetze means? Anybody, Vayetze. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. One of the root words, Vayetze, comes from the same word as Yitzias Mitzrayim. What does Yitzias Mitzrayim mean? To leave Egypt. Very good, to leave, the exodus. So what does Vayetze, it has the same root word. It keeps freezing on me. Vayetze means, what do you think Vayetze means? If Yitzias Mitzrayim means the leaving of Mitzrayim, what does Vayetze mean? Depart. It means and depart. he and he departed and he, and he left. And, and he was, left. Very good. Where was Yaakov leaving? Where was he going? What happened? Well, in last week's Torah portion, in Toldos, we had a discussion how um, the the whole story that happened with the switching of the blessing, right? Where Asa, the older brother. Goes to receive the first blessing. He holds it. He got the blessing. Ace had to get out. So Vayetze Yaakov, where does he go? He leaves. Where does he leave? You should all know this from last week. Where does he leave from? He's going to find his wife. Right. He's got a Bear Sheva. See, Louisa wasn't even here last week. She knows. Is that the name of the city? Is Bear Sheva named? Okay. So he leaves Beersheba, he leaves his father's home, and Vayetze, and where is he going? And he, read the first verse, Vayetze, Vayetze, he goes to Haran. Who is in Haran? Who is he running towards? Lavan. He's going to Lavan. Who's Lavan? Mother's. 
his mother's well, brother, his uncle. And who is he? Uncle. His okay. uncle. He's running away. Now, who, before we go into the lesson that we're going to learn today, who, why is he going there? Number one, he's running away. But he also is going to have, something's going to happen there. What happens there? He's going to meet the girls. He's going to meet the girls. He's going to meet his wives yeah. there. He, 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 the whole story goes on. You continue through the verse. A book goes on in this part on page 187. He meets Rachel by the well. He works for her for seven years. Mm -hmm. Then love on his, fa his father-in-law deceives him, switches the girls, and he marries Leah. He says, if you want to continue marrying Rachel, you have to work another seven, seven years. years. And through this time period, he meets um, he marries the two, the four wives. He has the two maid servants, and he has a total of 12 children. He has the 12 yeah. tribes. The, 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 the father, not the father, the uh, 12 tribes, which all the Jewish people eventually come from, that happens during this time period. Yeah. And he prospers, Yaakov, and it's unbelievable what happens in this, this time period of 21 years. And finally, he decides that it's time to leave his family. If you look on page 201, Yaakov flees from love and with his family, and he hear, Asaph hears that he's coming. It's been 21 years, and he finds out that he's still mad at him. He's and mad at him. Asa, his, his brother. brother. And if okay. you go to page 203, we see how Lovin chases after Yaakov. And he basically explains to him that it's time for him to move on, to go back to the land of Israel, to go back to Eretz Yisrael. And he continues. Um, and he, they make a pact with each other. He's, he, you know, he leaves. He goes in peace. And if you look at page 209, the end of the parsha, right before he's, a, he's about to meet Asa, he hears that craziness that Esav is coming possibly mm -hmm. to kill him. What's the last verse of page 209 of Parshas Vayetze? The angels from the land of Israel greet Yaakov. Okay? If you look at the verse, just because we're here, Yaakov went on his way. I'm on verse 30, uh, chapter 32, verse 2. Yaakov went on his way. And angels of God from the land of Israel encountered him to escort him to the land. When he saw them, Yaakov said, this is a camp of God. And he and I am. And that was it. Uh, Zoom ladies, do you hear me? Not so well. <laughs> Only sometimes, Rivka, so you well. take in and out. Yeah, I'm um, Rabbi's trying to fix the internet in the meantime. You're with me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what we were just in the middle of exploring is that... Oh, my, uh, I'm delayed, as you can see. What we are in the middle of exploring is that this parsha begins with Yaakov leaving Beersheba. He's running away. He gets to Haran. He builds a life. He's married. His kids uh, acquires wealth, tremendous wealth. And then he decides it's time to leave, and he goes back. But something interesting happens in the beginning and at the end of the parsha. Frozen. <clears throat> the same thing happened again. What is it? Frozen. Frozen. Oh. Shalom, should I use your phone in the meantime? Go back to the beginning of the Parsha. The beginning of the Parsha. Parsha. He has a dream that is correct. And if you look on page 181, on verse number 12. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Ladies, you're with me? Yeah, yes. What page you said? One eighty one. Okay, thank you. Excellent. 
both times angels when he's getting now where is this dream taking place in the wilderness oh, it's on mount maria excellent hi bonnie welcome it's on mount it, uh, oh there mira we got quite a crowd on zoom today it is on um on thank mount you maria. he is at that border between between the land of Israel and Haran. So he's almost in Haran. He's getting into Haran. He has this dream that angels are going up and down. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the um, his dream, we have an interesting question. Okay. Mm, Why? How, how does it describe the angels? They were going up and down or down and up? Up and down. They were going up and down. Now, where, where do angels come from? They come from up. Doesn't it make more sense for them to go down and up? Not up and down. You don't come yes. from the bottom. Yes. It says clearly in the parsha that they were going up. That means they were coming from down here. And that then they were going down. So Rashi, of course, has this question. And he pointed out this question to me just a few days ago. He says it's an interesting thing. What is it? Ladies, you hear me? Um, yes. No, you're frozen. Yeah, we're he we're gonna I'm gonna go on my phone. Fading in and out, Drifka. Israel were not permitted to leave the land, so they ascended to heaven. Here's the Jude. Right. So what so so what does Rashi say? Rashi says that the angels that accompanied Yaakov to Israel were not allowed to leave Israel. There's a rule. Actually, Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. All right. Ladies, you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Oh, it's better. Yes, can you hear me? Please, you hear me? Yes. So they don't hear me. Yes, but no. Okay, can I show work now? You guys can hear me? Yes. Okay, I apologize. We're good? Much, much better. Yay. We're still good? I don't see anybody's, um, uh, there we go. Oh, you hear me? Yes. yes. Yay, we need it. I don't Barely. see any. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, we're back. We're normal. We got nothing with us today, my little angel. And we are, um, I don't know why I think giving me seven days off of school. But um, <laughs> they have seven days off. I, I don't get it, but you can have it. Okay. Um, anyways, where were we? So we're talking about the angels. We're talking about them. So like Louisa correctly read from Rashi. Rashi has that same question. And Rashi basically tells us that the angels that accompanied him to the lands of Israel, they were not allowed to leave Israel. Okay. 
No. And new angels from outside the land of Israel came to accompany. So clearly, according to Rashi, two distinct groups of angels accompanied Yaakov. Those who left him at the border, so to speak, that left him at Israel, and those who joined in and entered um, to help him re uh, go into the, to the other land. Now, the important question is, how did Rashi come to this realization? How did Rashi yeah. come to this realization that about this rule is because there is a rule out there, uh, a, a rule of which an angel that angels are not are bound by geographical location. Yes. The what do you mean by rumor? Regional salesman. Regional they have a franchise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They are not allowed to leave. They are not allowed to leave their area. So, for example, angels that are do not have permission to venture out into the land of Israel, and therefore they must. Um, you know, in Israel, they have to ascend up, and the second angels were not allowed to go down. Now, to summarize, we're. Um, Now, what is the purpose of angels? Okay, now that's my question. What is the purpose of this angel? What are they doing? So they're escorting him. Give me more. Connection between human and God. Connection between human and God? Not exactly, because that could be, you know, uh, misused for idol worship. They're guiding in which way to go? They're actually, the goal of an angel most times is to protect. Uh -huh. They were actually protecting him. Mm -hmm. Now, here's something interesting. This encounter that we just read at the end, when they were leaving the, the when they were leaving the, when, when love on, uh, not love, and Yaakov and his wives and his children, when they were leaving the land of Israel, hi, Berta. Come on in. Okay. That's okay. Come on in. When they were leaving the land of Israel, we see that at this point, what happens at the end of the parsha? It says, if you look all the way at the end of the verse, by Yaakov Halach the Darko, by Yifku Uboy Malach Malachim Elakim. It's on, on chapter 32, verse 1, that Yaakov went on his way, and then the angels who are greeting him to come back to Israel, they encounter him. That means, what did they do? If someone's coming to greet you, what happened? <laughs> they No, they left the land of Israel to come greet him. A little bit of a contradiction here. We just learned that you're not allowed to leave your borders. That's why when he's about to go into Haran, the Israel angels go up. And the, the Haran angels come down. But when he's leaving Haran, and he's about to enter into the land of Israel, by Yifru, they come out to greet him. Why does the rule change there at the end? Understand the question? You mean the angels, they come out of Israel? Yes, and they come to greet him. So it seems like the angels, you know, crossed over. Oh, that You're doing such a good job. They did the so, <laughs> no, no. Just that the that the angels from the diaspora descended from heaven to escort the earth. When? At the end? No. You say you're at the end of the parasha or the beginning? No, at the beginning. At the beginning. But we're yeah. talking about the end that it seems that that rule changes. So I, before we answer this question, it's important to understand a little bit about how angels play a role in Judaism. Okay. Based on your own knowledge, what do you know about angels within the Jewish context? You know, people say sparingly, you're my angel, right? But do angels exist? I mean, you all know, are familiar with the song every we sing Friday night. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Asharis, right? What is that song, Shalom Aleichem? We're saying goodbye to the weekday angels and we're greeting the Shabbos angels. Okay? Uh, we know on a darker note, 
the angel of death passed over the Jewish, the homes of the firstborn in, in Egypt, right? When they were spreading the blood on the doorpost, they, they knew to skip over, to pass over. That's how Passover, right? Angel of death passed over whose home? Yeah. Part of the class. <laughs> so. So, okay, do we need a guide? We have a mission. Okay. We need, we need help. We <laughs> we'll take all the help we can get. Guardian okay. angel never hurts. <laughs> okay, that's right. So it seems like everybody likes this idea of angels. We feel good about it. We got a little, 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 all that, like you say, all the help we can get. Support, Is guidance. Is it fair to say that angels protect us no matter where we live? Israel or the other side. <laughs> so the idea, okay, Mira asked the question. Mommy? Yeah, I know. They're on, I'm doing it on the phone. Um, do angels protect us no matter where we are? Well, Mommy? Yes. Yeah. Go with that. Or, or punish. So. Okay. So, yeah. So Right. So you are correct, Leona. And the idea of an angel is angels have a very, very specific mission. Okay. Sometimes they come in the form of a human, right? Right. Like with the story of Avram, we read a couple of parts ago. He was sad that he didn't have um, visitors. So Hashem sent him three angels. So why three? Because an angel is very mission oriented. And if an angel is going to um, have a mission, he cannot do more than one mission at a time. That's why Hashem, when he went to Avram, he sent three angels. One to tell the news that Sarah was going to have a baby. One to tell him that Sodom was going to be captured. And one to visit him and cheer him up because he was sick. Why couldn't he send one angel? That was after the circumcision, correct. Why couldn't he send one angel to do all of these? Because every angel can only do one mission. So in answer to our question, what is the purpose of an angel? When we say angel, angel in Hebrew is malach. Shalom aleichem malachei hasharei. Malachei, malachim are angels. Angels are messengers from heaven to this world and from this world to heaven. They are only one dimensional and they can only do one mission at a time. Now, because an angel um, is very mission focused, an angel cannot grow. Compare an angel to a human, let's say. A human being has within it the concept of choice. It can do good, it can do bad. I once heard a beautiful saying that a human being but an angel is completely pure, even the evil angel, because they're, they're, they're there to fulfill a mission of Hashem. In general, the whole idea of angels is very, uh, there's a lot more in angels. Like in the prophets, when you hear them describe certain prophecies, they, like they'll use things like wings. And the reason it uses all this form, Maimonides write that angels don't have form, is because they use it to explain it so that the human being can understand it. But it doesn't really have a form. But just in general, the whole idea of angels is very interesting about what its mission is, but they're pure in the sense that they're there for a mission. A human being, if we rise above, and by the way, side point, animals, like if you have to take angels, animals, and people, okay? Animals have instincts. They only live on their instincts. They, there are some kinder hearted animals than others, you know, like you know, let's say a dog, right? The Hebrew name for dog is Kulo Lev, all heart. That's why many people have dogs as pets because of that comfort that it brings. Um, every animal has a mission, but at the end of the day, an animal is an animal. And a human and an angel, what are the differences? An animal, if it chases its prey, right, to get food, it's not being bad, it's just acting the way Hashem created it. An angel has to follow its mission. The human being, it says that if a human being chooses 
to act in a way that's negative and doesn't listen to it listens to its evil inclination, it's worse than an animal. But if it chooses to behave in a way that it rises above and it listens to its good inclination and acts godly and makes good choices, it's higher than an angel. Higher than an angel. Than an angel. That's the power of, this is a side point because we're talking about angels. Here's my technical director number two. Oh, yeah. Or Miss Mahoy. <laughs> Yes, hi, lady. He's a bar mitzvah boy. I hope I'll see you all on Thursday. We'll be, uh, we'll be celebrating his bar mitzvah. So, um, isn't that interesting about the human being oh. and the angel? So the hi, human, hi. What is it? Somebody had a question on Zoom? No? So the human being has the ability uh -huh. to rise above an angel and to lower themselves below an animal. That's how much Hashem has given us that power because we have the freedom of choice. But an angel, that's our topic of conversation, they're very focused, they're very mission-oriented. You've heard of the idea of a guardian angel. We have We actually create angels. We create good angels, we create bad angels. We create angels because it, in essence, angel is a form of spiritual energy. That's essentially what an spiritual angel energy. is. And sometimes they will come out into a, uh, a human form Sometimes mm -hmm. they're sent, um, um, they, and, 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 and they'll divest themselves of their, their bodily form and go back up to the upper world because they've completed their mission. So they come they in different come forms. In so, yes, I mean, angels are all, all around us all the time. We have a protection yeah. from angels. Yeah. All the time. But it's a matter of the Correct. I saw yes. you. Um, Every time, my cholesterol was still... An animal has self-will, but an animal... It does not have self-will. An, an animal can never not follow its instinct. Only a, a human being has an instinct, let's say. They're hungry. But because I'm a human being and my child is hungry, or my friend is hungry, I can rise above my instinct and give away my food to my friend because Hashem gave me that power. An animal does not have the power. It's just not the way they were created. They have a choice. They don't, right? Correct. They don't choice. have choice. Just the way it is. Choice. It's not good or bad. It just is. Correct. Do the, do the angels have a choice? No. Angels do not have choice. Correct. That, that is a good example. That is correct. An animal is limited in its dimension. An angel is very limited. I think even more so in the West than in the Middle East. That it's just not based on their purpose. Well, in a sense, so they're very similar. Angel, <laughs> listen, angels and animals, they're they both, they're, they're, they're not bad. They may fulfill evil things. Like the angel of death. No one's gonna say I love the angel of death, but it is a, but it's, yeah, but an, a, there's no moral when it comes to angels. Anyways, correct. It's not something that they have a choice in, but they sometimes perform things that are not good as, uh, as a message. But let let's go back to our question, ladies. Let's let's come back to our question: Is why did the angels from Israel? at the end of the Parsha, seemingly break the rules, right? They left Israel to escort Yaakov back into the land of Israel. Um, so let's understand what were the mission of the angels, okay? We just spoke briefly about Judaism's view on angels. So let's go a little bit deeper to what was the mission of the angels in this particular case. So Rashi, um, um, there's different commentary. There's um, the the Maharal. We speak about the Maharal a, a, a lot. We speak about the Ramba, Maimonides. A lot of people, a lot of commentaries have a Rafi have different explanation of what the purpose of the angels were. Some say to protect. Some say to honor. To honor Yaakov. Some say to protect Yaakov. And the Gorari from Barashas basically explains. How? Need your phone. 
um, explains how on the way when Rashi, excuse me, when Yaakov was entering into Haran, he was running away from who? He was running away from Asa. So they were there to sure. protect him. He was gonna, yeah, Asa wanted to kill him. When he was coming back with his wealth and his wives and his children, and he was entering into the land of Israel, they were there to honor him. Now, why two groups? Let's start from the first one. When they were going to protect him, why the switchover? Why can't the same people that were protecting him protect him till he's there? Because, he, and, and we said that the ones that leave Eretz's borders, right? We spoke about borders, especially in the land of Israel. Because in the land of Israel, just by raise of hand, who here has been to the land of Israel? Yes. Who's been here to Israel? Yes, many times. Many times. When you walk, I, I had one time to go, and it was midnight. I was on a uh, You didn't get it. You didn't get it. So it's no. So anybody who's been to the any that's true. Anybody who's been to the land of Israel knows the energy and the spirituality that's here. It's not saying something you could touch. People come off the you land of feel it. You can literally feel it. Feel and it's not it, you can feel it, but you can't touch it. You feel like you can touch it. There are reasons that you're walking down the streets of Jerusalem and there's something there. It's, 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 it's not even comparable. You have to go there to understand what I'm talking about. But anybody who's been there agrees with me. It's so, in the air. <laughs> it's in the air. But there's a, spe so there's a special, this is a country that exists. This is a country that exists on a higher scale. Can't hear you doesn't have that underlying holiness of course sir many people when they return from the land of israel they're like oh, i just miss that that elevated sense there's something coarser there's something not as refined <clears throat> and even in the times of yaakov there was that difference as well since the land of israel was chosen by hashem to give to avram yitzhak and yaakov abram isaac and jacob sarah rifka rachel and leah so when those angels that's why there were the two groups but regardless whether yeah. should work. Yeah. Good. Good. Ladies, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah I'm good. Yes. Do you hear me from this computer? Yeah. Yes. But I don't hear you. Say something. Yes. Everything is good. You look beautiful. I hear you. Yes. You hear me Can with you. it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, you hear me? Yes. Yes. Addition. <laughs> um, better magic today. You <laughs> we have better magic today. Um, where was I? So that's what. So we understand from the, the sense of Israel. That's why there had to be. You know, there were two groups. You know, the ones that are are a part of Israel. They live on a different plane. They get to the border. Bam, they're not moving anywhere. The ones who are outside, they spoke. And they were going there, of course, to. Uh, Did they ever go in? One Frozen again. Sorry? Am I frozen? Yes. yes frozen. I'm frozen? frozen. You're not frozen, computer frozen. <laughs> I'm not frozen. <laughs> oh, there. It says that they said that I was freezing. Um This, here comes something very interesting. Is we need to examine is a person, are we about, if, you're, if you live in Israel, are you allowed to leave Israel? There's actually halachos, laws about leaving the land of Israel. Okay. So Maimonides writes, I'm going to read it to you. Okay. It's forbidden to leave the land of Israel to dwell abroad, if you go, 
except in certain extraordinary circumstances. In order to study Torah, to find a spouse or get married, rescue one's position. Similarly, one may leave Israel for business purposes, but it's forbidden to settle these, to settle there permanently unless there's a famine in Israel. This is from Maimonides, okay? Oh gosh, I'm not good. No, I'm not. The requirement to honor, this is from the Talmud, to honor one's parents and not over possible to leave the land of Israel for the purpose of going out to greet one's father or mother who is on the way to Israel and in such matters of respect and honor. So when it comes to leaving, this is some of what I just said. When it comes to leaving, ladies, am I frozen? No. Okay. When it, you guys got to move, so I know you're not frozen. Uh, we're not frozen. I see. Slightly better before, but no, it's okay now. It won't, it'll freeze. So I won't know. Um, when it comes to leaving the, the land of Israel, you're allowed to leave the land of Israel for the above reasons mentioned. You know what we just spoke about. But it's regarded. But it, 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 it's regarded. Let me. please your screen. Please mute yourself if you're talking. Oh, mute, yeah. Mute. Oh, mute. I know. So, um, how do I know? I just know people's husbands, right? Um, the, the act of um, of leaving regardless if you have a good excuse, is considered a departure, even though it's permissible. But then the second Talmud that I just read is that when you go out to greet one's parents who are en route to, to um, coming to the land of Israel, you're allowed to leave to greet them. It's not even considered a departure. So it's not even considered an exception to the rule because it's, it's like you never left. You just went to greet them to bring them in. That's what the halacha, that's what the law says. Now we can apply these concepts to our question, right? The angels coming to greet Yaakov, what would you say is, is it like? Is it like Torah study, marriage, rescuing possessions, honoring or escorting a parent or a teacher, living permanently it's abroad? Escort, escorting. It's very similar to the escorting. It's not, it's, it, we're talking about Yaakov, who was a great tzaddik. So it wasn't even prohibited from the angel's perspective because their departure wasn't like a real departure. They were leaving for the purpose, like the Talmud we'll tells back. us is allowed, so that they can bring him back. And safely. So to protect him. Well, in this particular case, we go on and to the thing him. of, in, according to all the explanations, when he was coming back, it wasn't for protection. For, the focus wasn't on protection. The focus was on honor. In the beginning, when he was going to Haran and he was leaving and running away from Asab, the focus was on protection. But when he's coming back now, they are allowed to, so to speak, cross the border and escort him. But the focus here is on honor. Now, um, we discuss the mission of the angel protecting and honoring him. But actually, when he left um, Israel, wasn't only to run away from Esau. His mother told him, if you look in um, last week's parsha, chapter 28, verse number two, which in your Chumash is in uh, page 177. What does Rivka tell Yitzchak? We're on page 177, chapter 27, verse number two. She says, was to go and travel to Padan Aram in the house of Basuel. Basuel is your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there, from the daughters of love on your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you. May you be fruitful and multiply, and you will become an assembly of nations. May He give you the blessing of Avram to you and to your seed with you, that you will inherit the land which you only wandered in until now, which God gave to Avram. So. We see over here that he had a second mission from when he was running away. He wasn't just running away from Esau. He was actually going to get married and find a wife and build up the nation, the Jewish people, and inherit this land of Israel. In other words, this whole mission, so to speak, of what Yaakov was here to do. 
He had a global mission of building up Am Yisrael, building up the Jewish nation. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, right, because Hashem could do anything, where was he going to accomplish this mission? Not in Eretz Yisrael. Where? Mm -hmm. In Padan Aram. In Haran. He was going to Chutz Laaretz. He was going outside of the land of Israel to do what? The greatest accomplishment of building up the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And where did Hashem want him to do it? Hashem wanted him to do it not in Eretz Yisrael, but outside of Israel. Why? Why? To transform Padan Aram into the holiness of Israel. Let me explain. To to, I'll, I'll repeat it again. To transform Padan Aram or Haran or the outside world mm -hmm. of Israel, which we know is finer, is, is, not, is not as refined, is coarser, mm -hmm. and to transform it into the holiness of Israel. He was coming with the protection and the energy of Israel. Interestingly enough, by the way, we spoke about Yitzchak last week. He never left the land of Israel. He had a different mission. Yaakov could only reach his full potential and accomplish his mission outside the land of Israel. You know, there's a story of the... They have, they have the 12 tribes. Yeah, but he could have had them in Israel. Why did Hashem but want it, it to but take... it didn't happen that way. It could have. Probably. I don't know. You know, there's... Um, this is a... a, a <laughs> Anything could have happened differently. I'm saying Hashem the could. Rest of our day. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. But there are certain reasons why, right? Certain things happen. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Why did Hashem? And we also know that when it comes to Torah, right? There are certain things that are said and certain things that are not said, right? We don't know what happens between the ten generations between Adam and Noah. It's not applicable to our lives. Torah is not a storybook. It's a blueprint on how to live our lives. That's that's what Torah is. It's Torah. Ah, it's teaching. There's a lesson for me. Mm -hmm. The fact that Hashem chose to have Yaakov fulfill his mission outside of the land of Israel is very, very applicable to our life and very applicable to really the mission of why we are here. The, the whole world. The, that is correct the as well. Jew. The wandering Jew. Well, first of all, do you know that there was <laughs> That's a... That's why I'm here. There was a man... I'm an outsider. There was a, there was a man by wander. the name... Uh, there was a, a, a man it's who wanted... Wandering Jew. The, so today. So <laughs> actually, wander. this wandering... We're going to talk about that in a second. But I, I want to... No, no. Actually, I, I want to address that. Uh, Ruff was talking about the wandering Jew. There's a mission... Excuse me, the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Chabad Rebbe, was approached by a chassid. He was very disturbed. He was not able to leave Russia and go to Israel for whatever reason. He wanted to make Aliyah, and he couldn't. And he was very depressed about it. And he approached the Tzemach Tzedek, and he asked him what he should do. So here's the famous song that I want you to remember in Yiddish. Tzemach Tzedek told him, Machda Eretz Yisrael. Make here Eretz Yisrael. Oh, my God. And that wasn't a very simple answer just to say, you know, remain where you are. You don't have no. permission to leave. No. It was an instruction on how to make, how does a person make oneself worthy of living in the land of Israel? How does one prepare himself for living in the land of Israel? By transforming his own place into let it don't think you don't think so no i'm gonna explain evangelism is going out and making people leaving the hobby there's no there's no such a thing in Judaism as making could you repeat what she just said she wants to know if it's eva evangelism and i'm saying no so because in, i got it right right yeah okay. it's a christian concept and the reason it. is and you got it from the Christian concept, but the reason it's not a Jewish concept is because Jews don't, in Judaism, the mission of the world is not to make anyone believe in anything. Every person needs to, has within themselves their own inner okay. core, their own inner soul, their own inner journey. And for Jews, there's one journey. For non-Jews, there's another journey. Mm -hmm. But the goal is all the same. In transforming this world and bringing 
and elevating the sparks within this world. It comes from within and it not abso- from out. Absolutely. And the Christian point of view is it comes from out without it. Well, I'm not familiar so much with Christian point of view, but one thing I, I, I know what it's not. And it's not about conversion or making other people believe. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it, it's about your own connection That's with right. God. I agree with that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there are, that is correct. But the Christian and is always trying to make someone else. Everybody. Correct. Yes. That is not and a I Jewish see the concept. Difference now. That's interesting. Because I do believe that it has to come from within. Yeah. Judaism, Judaism is not into coercion. In fact, Jews throughout mm-hmm. history have fought against that. The Spanish Inquisition, you know, everything. The, the, every, unfor- unfortunately, so many bombing. nations try to, yeah. to force, and Jews throughout history have died with Shema on their lips just not to be forced to, to believe in something other than Hashem. Mm-hmm. But let, let, let's bring us back to this idea that when the world was created, right, Hashem was the world just had Hashem, right? This is deep, this is Kabbalistic. Um, and then there was the world, Hashem decided to create the world. So where did all that spiritual light go? In your soul. It, well, it's within us, but how come I, some days, how come some days I don't feel so uh, angelic? <laughs> Some days I don't feel so spiritual. It's inside of me. <laughs> what happened to all that spiritual light that was here before the world was created? Hashem, the only reason you and I feel ourselves as people, the only reason we look at this table and we see a table is be- and not spirituality is because spirituality was condensed. There are sparks of godliness in every single thing in this world. And our mission is to uncover those sparks. Now, you understand it is a hard mission. mission. (laughs) However, however, in the land of Israel, they're not as trapped. They're much more revealed. So that is why when you walk down the street, yes, it's much more revealed. That is why when you walk the streets of Israel, you feel the spirituality more because they're more exposed. In other words, our mission outside of the land of Israel, what was it Samach Tzedek saying, Mahta Eretz Yisrael, is to elevate those sparks, to untrap those sparks so that we feel godliness and spirituality wherever we are. And we can now see that interpretation, so to speak, with, um, is, um, is that what was the reason of why those angels went out to greet Yaakov, right? They came to honor him. Why were they coming out to honor him? Because they, what was the honor, so to speak, that he deserved? He, this was a result of what Yaakov actually accomplished in Padan Aram. He didn't just have an accomplishment of wives and children, etc. There was something more spiritually um, refined in what he did. And that is that he was able to elevate Haran, pardon Aram, to a level of spirituality that was only attained in the land of Israel. What did he do when he left Israel? He elevated the place and revealed all of those sparks. So now the angels came out not only to honor him, but they came out to greet him to this place that he, so to speak, elevated. His presence reflected the sanctity of what he accomplished. And by the way, this is the goal of really the purpose of creation. In the future, the entire world is going to achieve, is going to feel the same like it does in the land of Israel. Shores of America will have that same feeling in the land of Israel. How is this accomplished? This is accomplished by Machta Eretz Israel by elevating our spaces. Right now, I can promise you that sitting around this table, there's a certain sense, and by the way, all of you sitting on Zoom in your home, wherever you are, at your kitchen table, at your home office, you are, by having this conversation and learning the words of Torah, there's an element of transformation going on right here, right? True, 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 if I may say so, for a person who don't know nothing. Right? 
So our well, consciousness there's, there's, is, is yep, yep, maturing. Yep, but we, oh, that, that, that. But wait, but, but, but one second. There's an element of elevation that we feel, an element of spiritual energy that we feel in these in, in our four corners right here, and we're going to take that energy. We're going to take this learning, and when we go to Publix, where we go walk out onto mm -hmm. our porch, where we meet people in our lives, mm -hmm. we are going to bring that energy and continue to elevate it. And what's interesting is I was explaining before about Yitzchak and Yaakov. Yitzchak never left the land of Israel. He had a different mission. Yaakov's mission, where he actually created the Jewish people in Padan Aram, Yaakov's mission was accomplished to represent really what our mission is. You know, in, in our case specifically, there, there, um, Rachel, you mentioned the wandering Jew. Some of you mentioned the wandering Jew. You know, the Jewish people, when they left Egypt, right, they were a newly formed nation. And they went on to the land of Israel 40 years later. They had a temple, and then the second temple. And finally, when the second temple was destroyed, there was the diaspora. And everybody split all over. And we know that in general, that for, for, for a Jew, life in a foreign land has not always been easy. Right? Not always been easy. No. Right. You know, Jews are reminded of anti-Semitism, unfortunately, throughout history. It's, mm -hmm. it's just been around mm -hmm. forever. And we are, unfortunately, still right. feeling it today in a free country, I in a, in a world where we have the freedom to practice Judaism or, or religious freedom, no matter what religion. It's, it's a terrible thing. But th what, what was the deeper plan? What is the purpose of what being the, in a foreign uh, land? What is the purpose? Just like Yaakov went to Haran with the intention of elevating his environment to a more spiritual place. Yes, I can see that. We have that ability to elevate our environment wherever we are. And sometimes we feel, we think to ourselves, really? How can I, I live, how? I live in a little home in Northport. I live okay. in a, right? yeah. anybody, right? We're living in this, right. how, how do I, how, how do I, in my little location of wherever I am, how do I do that? Put the Hanukkah candles out. Like, what? Know. That does put the Hanukkah candles out. That yeah. does, but more than that, Hashem has given us the ability to 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 elevate everything that we do, every place that we are, by doing a mitzvah, by being true to ourselves, by asking ourselves, "What is my mission in this world?" Every single day, a person needs to ask themselves, "Why am I here? Why am I here? Why does Shem, why yeah. why does Shem create me?" What am I here to do? You know, sometimes just by being, I, it was so interesting. There was a guy who had a store um, in, on 41. Um, and he was open on Saturdays. I'm on Venice. And we used to walk to Shul every Shabbos when we lived closer to our, you know, our home when, um, when we had the storefront. And 10 years, I think we lived there. Maybe, uh, it was 12, 13 years, but, um, and we would just walk to show back and forth, like seven years into walking every year, you know, one mile each way. This guy comes, we, I, my, this, I, I went into the store to, to, um, like a framing work, uh, the frame store. He had a, I went in to frame something and I'm talking to him. I was with one of my children and he says, how's the synagogue going? And I'm like, sent the building of the synagogue. I said, like, do you know me? Like, I came to frame a picture. Mm -hmm. So he said, I want you to know I watch you every single Saturday walk with your children. I'm 41. It's the most inspirational thing of my day. Wow. And he something? basically explained to me how he, he, you know, he was going through some personal things in his own life. And watching people, you know, with he, he gave me like a whole Parsha on like, you know, watching me with the children and he told me, he goes, it, it changed my life. Really? And I was like, huh? I'm just walking to show. <laughs> just made me sweaty. I'm just hot. Walking to show, <laughs> trying to control sweaty. my kids, not running into the street. You were there seven years. <laughs> I, in that store ten. Yeah. And here, the guy was so moved by me walking to show. And I wasn't even doing anything. I was just being, right? 
Yeah. Sometimes in life, just being. Yes. We don't even know how. We don't even know. We have no Isn't idea how much how influence we can affect people, and we didn't do anything about it. We didn't even try. Or even yeah. the That's little strange. thing that you might. There do. are so many votes. Yeah. 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 People That's absolutely amazing. think of our own lives. How there are people that affected us that they don't know that they affected us. A mm -hmm. teacher, or whatever. But the idea is that we have no idea how we affect others. We, but we, one thing we do know is that every single action that we do makes a difference. Another element, and then I'll get to your question, Leo, and I know some of you want to, uh, all what you're saying is that- um, Don't make mistakes. Yeah, go, um, Leona, what did you want to expand? <laughs> oh, okay. So the idea is that also, is that sometimes, you know, Yaakov, he descended, it was a descending for him to go from Israel into the land of Haran. And one may think that in their lives, they have a descent, a descent of some sort. It could be something like losing a job. I mean, it could be, that's just something that I thought of, but like, it could be a loss. It could be a, um, it could be a change in their life that doesn't look like an ascent. It looks like a descent. But we see that where were the, where was our, where was Yaakov able to accomplish his mission? Only through the descent, only through the descent of, sometimes we have to hit rock bottom to make a change. Sometimes we need the descent. If you know the game, when you want to run far, how do, what do you do? Like when we're playing a game and we have a race, who's going to run the farthest with my kids? Back up because they want to have that back up, that descent, right? Like you have a slingshot, you back up to go the farthest. There's a concept in Hebrew, Yerida L'Tairachalia, the descent for the purpose of the ascent. I'm sure many of us can think of things in our life that seemed, right? Everybody's lived long enough to see things in their life or they haven't mm -hmm. looked at it that way, but take a moment and think. Mm -hmm. Things in their life that they thought were going to be a negative and it ended up bringing up way more positive change in their life than they could have ever imagined. It allowed mm -hmm. them to reach places inside their own soul, bring out tests in their life that brought out things inside of them that they never would have reached had they not had this descent. And I'm sure every single one of us have experienced that on different levels. For some of us, it's been more tragic. For some of us, you get older. for sure, you, like have more li you have more life experiences. It's amazing. It's happening in my life. So, so which is which is unbelievable. Mine is unbelievable at this point. At this point. Well, the older we get, the more life experience we have. But you should know, Greta. Is that it good? <laughs> yes, of that's course, so ultimately it's that's, good, but it's very interesting because it's so a guy. I'm, I'm completely changed since my husband died because I was taking care of him all the time and I didn't have time to think. But now it's amazing what's Things happening in my life. I can't believe it. Wow. <laughs> You know what? Strange things enjoy it. it. And strange people I'm getting in touch with. This man comes over and prays with me this morning. Things my um, screens. They were filthy. I didn't know that. I was thought I had to buy new screens because it was such a mess. <laughs> Listen, I, I, want, I want to tell you something. That in, in life, we are going to have experiences. But we the question, though, is how are we going to approach those experiences? right? How are we going to approach those experiences? How are we going to look at the descent in our own life? So this is one lesson, right? There's so many lessons. I mean, the mm -hmm. whole story, by the way, in Vayetze of the two wives, right? Yaakov and Le Rachel and Leah, there's so much richness just on that whole story. But today we focus on the latter. We focus on the ascent. We focus on the descent. Remembering that Yaakov's descent into Haran was in order to elevate that place. And that was done by extracting the embedded sparks of wholeness within Haran. Remember that each and every one of us have the ability to extract wholeness wherever we are. If it's being kind to somebody when you're in the supermarket, if it's taking mm -hmm. upon an extra mitzvah, Hashem has given us so much opportunity. We just have to tap into it. It's right in front of us. We just have to tap into it. And again, the goal is that we elevate all the sparks so we can elevate this entire world to the level of the land of Eretz Yisrael. And we can fulfill our final mission of bringing Mashiach into this world. So that's just the short of it for today.
Ladies on Zoom, I know some of you want to ask some questions. Anybody? You're shell shocked. <laughs> Rivka, I enjoyed the beautiful story, but you're walking to shul and I can tell you that another friend of ours who's no longer with us, who sadly passed, also said that you and Rabbi inspired him walking to shul with your children on Shabbos. So, really? Yes, another okay. close friend of ours who sadly passed away said the same thing. So it's wow. a beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> just walking to shul is a, a beautiful mitzvah too. <laughs> it is a beautiful mitzvah. And I'm telling you, it's, it's, we, we don't really, we think that to make, we think that to make change in this world, by the way, I want to I say something. We think sometimes to make change in this world, we need to make, do big stuff, yeah. right? We need to be the machers. We need to be the movers. We need to be the shakers. And by the way, there is room for that to make big waves, but we don't realize, I mean, everybody knows, right? You throw a little pebble into water and the ripple effect it has. We have no idea in our, in our own lives, how just doing one act of kindness, one, one good mitzvah, one good deed. We, we, we can change somebody's life. We can change the world. We, we have no idea. And I think the more we have an awareness of that, the more we're bound to do more good in our life, and to, to bring this world to, to the state that Hashem wants it to be in. I have a question. Yes. It's Terry, by the way. Oh, Hi, guys. Sippy. I was like, who's Sippy? Terry, oh, how are you there? Yeah, that's my uh, Hebrew Zoom. <laughs> that's nice. What is your question? How come we can't see anybody at the table? That's number one. <laughs> because we were having... We were having we were having internet issues today, so we shut down that screen, and it's much clearer now. I wish they could um, see you because we have quite a crowd on Zoom today. I can tell. I I, yes. I heard what Louisa, is your but anyway, <laughs> um, what's your question? Um, the question is that place that uh, Yaakov went to Padan Haram. Where is uh, that at? In Haran, huh? No, that's Haran. No, like Haran. nowadays. Nowadays, what, 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 Iran. I believe, yes, I was just going to say, I believe it's Iran. Oh, wrap or something. Do you know where it is today, Haran? Uh, Turkey. Turkey. Upper, yeah, upper Mesopotamia. Turkey. Uh, Turkey. Very interesting. Well, if um, Yaakov, like, um, you know, uh, went up there to bring Yaakov away. Yeah. He went there to bring Torah and uh, to uplift, I guess, Turkey. Where is it standing Turkey nowadays? If it was already uplifted, do they know Torah there a lot? <laughs> it's a good question. I will tell you, though, that before the land, the, he, he elevated on a certain level. But at the same time, the, um, this was before the Torah was given. He elevated in his own realm. But once the Torah was given, a whole new segment of our mission was changed. There was pre the giving of the Torah and after the giving of the Torah. So he elevated it pre giving of the Torah. Oh yeah, that's true because the Torah hasn't been given yet. Yeah. All righty. Yeah. Any other questions? We are still here. Um, we are gonna pack some boxes for Hanukkah. Anybody who's who's here can help out. Yes, my Zoom ladies, I'm listening. I can stop and deliver in Northport. Like today's discussion. Okay. Did you like it? When you want me to stop today, yeah. tomorrow? I, uh, I, I will well. ask Rabbi, I'm gonna write it down to get in touch with you. He's gonna... Okay. I don't, I, I, I don't know how we're going about the delivery. We may be mailing it, I don't know. Oh, here he is, you can give a... We are, we are mass mailing it. We're not mm -hmm. delivering this year. Yeah, because we're doing, we're, we're sending it out to 500 homes. Wow. Yeah. But if anybody wants to come out anytime themselves or just help pack in the next few days, we're probably going to be packing till Friday. No stop. Right. Anytime? Anytime. <laughs> anytime. You can come at 2 a.m. as well. The tent is open. Oh, Wait, good. are we having a big party tomorrow? 
Every day is a party here. No, <laughs> Thursday. Party is Thursday. Not tomorrow, Thursday. Oh, well, Not Thursday. Well, I, I am the looking for you. I mean, I'm looking for a few handy people who want to set up the menorah in Northport. Are you going to come? When? Any, any men? Uh, next week, Sunday, Monday, we're going to put one up outside the lake and one on the city hall. Okay, let us know when uh, around the lake you're going to be here. Let me write it down, though. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Louisa, you know what to do? Okay, Shalom, are you coming out to direct? Yeah, come out. Okay. All right, ladies, have a good week. Hopefully, I'll see some of you on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you, Rivka. Thank you very much. All the best for Levi. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you on Zoom either on Thursday or we'll see you in person. 10 o'clock on Thursday? 10 o'clock, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful occasion. Yes. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Bye-bye. See you later. Thank you, Rivka.